guys, welcome back. Today we're out at the range with the Bryn 805. And I know what you guys are going to say, Mac, we've already seen the Bryn 805. Well, that's because I want to talk about the Bryn 2. The Bryn 2 recently dropped on the U.S. market. It did so without much fanfare. No media outlets talked about it. I didn't even know it was coming. I had people asking me, when's the Bryn 2 coming? And last I had heard, it may make an appearance in 2018, but I was hearing 2019. But I was just recently in the Czech Republic. I went back over with a, a group of media folks and we took another factory tour and I always love going to the Czech Republic. It's one of the best places in Europe and also I really enjoy going through the factory even though I've been through it once before. So we did a factory tour and while I was there I got an email from a Patreon saying hey there's a Bryn 2 on Gun Broker, is this legit? Well I quickly responded I've heard nothing about the Bryn 2, I don't know if it's legit, maybe somebody's taking pre-orders and so I asked the guys the next morning at breakfast if it was indeed a legit Bryn 2, and I was told yes it was. But then I was asking why wasn't the media told about this Bryn 2? Well, it turns out the Bryn 2s that are currently on the U.S. market, which were sold by Bill Hicks, which is a distributor, they aren't the configuration that CZ USA wanted. They had placed an order for a slightly different configuration, and the guns that they got were straight up military Bryn 2s, but they're pistols, of course, for import reasons, and it's not what they wanted to go to market with. They wanted to go to market with a more modular rifle that had more modular features, and they were sitting on a pile of these straight up military Bryn 2 pistols they didn't know what to do with, so they liquidated them quietly to Bill Hicks. He put them out on the market. They wound up on Gun Broker, Prepper's Gun Shop, and places like that and they quickly disappeared into the fabric of the gun-owning community here in the United States. You can still find them on Gun Broker. They went from $1,700, which is what I got my first one for while I was in the Czech Republic from Prepper's Gun Shop. I bought it on my phone while I was talking to Zach at CZ USA. And then, um, yeah, now they're up to like $1,900, $2,000. Now they were imported in multiple different configurations. You had eight inch, 11 inch, and 14 inch versions. They were in 5.56, and 762 by 39. So the 805 was something that I was extremely fond of and still am. But the Bryn 2 brings a lot of cool features, a lot of improvements to the original 805 that a lot of us were asking for. And I think it has the possibility of being the proverbial ever quested for scar killer. All right, so we're gonna run a magazine out of the 805 here and mine is in its traditional military configuration. So this has the military length barrel on it, has the bayonet lug, this one's uh, copper custom, repainted in the gray, grayish green color. And then I got an original non-adjustable folding stock, and I converted this one to use the proper Bryn 805 magazines. All right, so we'll do a little bit of shooting with this one. This one has the reciprocating charging handle, of course, and I have a Midwest Industries mount on here with a Trigicon MRO. And the Midwest Industries mount and the MRO, I believe you can pick them all up at Optics Planet. We do have a code down below. We get no kickbacks from the use of that code. It's just a thank you to our guys and gals watching the channel for doing so. All right, so let's fire off a few rounds with this. Then let's jump into the Bryn 2. So here's the 805 and over here we have a selection of Bryn 2s. Now you guys are probably going, geez, Mac, you went hog wild with all those rifles. Well, actually they're all pistols, but um, this one's the only rifle here because it's an SBR and these have braces on them. But this is the eight inch barreled version that I got from Prepper's Gun Shop while I was in the Czech Republic. This one is Jason's gun and this was sent to Jason uh, by a Patreon who bought pretty much every Bryn he could find. And uh, he was kind enough to send out this 762 by 39 for Jason to play with. And then this is a 14 inch barreled gun. And then a 556 14 inch barreled gun for me to play with. So that's how we came across all three of these Bryn 2s. All right, so here's the Bryn 1. Some of the stuff that I complained about with the original Bryn 1 was first of all, it had a reciprocating charging handle, just like the SCAR. Everybody hates the reciprocating charging handle with good reason on the SCAR. And one of the reasons the military 
wanted a non-reciprocating charging handle was because they presumably wanted a forward assist so they could tap the bolt home if it didn't go closed uh, when it was being reloaded or while it was firing, which seems a bit silly because we already know that we can make a forward assist capable charging handle that doesn't reciprocate. They were doing it in the 70s with the Steyr AUG. So anyway, makes no sense. So this rifle, just like the SCAR, has the reciprocating charging handle that connects directly to the bolt carrier. Also, one of the things I didn't like about this gun was the bolt hold open feature. It was kind of hard to do. So when you pull the bolt to the rear, you would push this little button and it would sometimes catch, sometimes it wouldn't. To release it, you would just pull to the rear and let go. But that little bolt hold was kind of hard to get to and there was no release anywhere over here. There's nothing in the trigger guard and nothing over here. And of course, this one again is converted to um, the 805 magazine, the proper 805 magazine, not the NATO standard Stenag magazine. So that was some of the complaints that people had with the gun, primarily. Now the gas system and things like that, it's still a short stroke gas piston that's in the 805, it carries over to the Bryn 2, but the Bryn 2 brings quite a bit more in terms of ergonomics to the table and gets rid of this reciprocating charging handle. So let's put the original Bryn away and let's take a look now at the Bryn 2. So the Bryn 2 has pretty much the same polymer pistol grip that has adjustable back straps for the shooter's grip. Now you have a, of course with the Stenag magazine, you had a, a magazine release over here, which we don't have on the 805 because it uses an AK style magazine, but we have the, the, uh, the magazine release here, but now we also have a bolt hold open, which I can push up on with my index finger and lock the bolt open. And I have a bolt release, which I can now push down on and release the bolt. You're gonna find these features on both. All the features that are present on the 5.56 are present on the 7.62 by 39, because if you take a look here at the magazine well, this is just a sleeved insert. And so if I wanted to convert this 5.56 to a 7.62 by 39, I pull the, the sleeve out, and now it will accept the proprietary 7.62 by 39 Bryn 2 magazine. All right. We still have pretty much the same short hand guard gone are the 1913 rails. Now they're M-lock slots, which I have some, um, just some Magpul uh, heat shielding there in my M-lock slots. So they did away with the 1913 rails. We still have a very pronounced brass deflector over here. We still have the same sling attachments back here at the rear. But when we took a look, take a look at the other side of the rifle, we still have the same ambi controls, which are present on both sides of the gun. You don't see the big pronounced pictograph that, or dots that are on the 805, but now we have CZ Bryn 2 marked here on the receiver, and now we have a ping pong paddle, very familiar to those of you that use AR-15s, which is pretty much everybody. So I can pull the bolt to the rear, and you'll notice that the, the charging handle has changed. That's because it's a non-reciprocating charging handle that also acts as a forward assist. So I can pull the bolt to the rear and release it, but when the gun fires, I can shoot it like this, which I'll demonstrate shortly, and the gun won't malfunction and it won't hurt the operator. You can pull the bolt to the rear, and of course, like I said, I can push up on the bolt hold in the magazine well and lock the bolt to the rear. I can push down here and do the exact same thing. I have an ambi mag release over here on this side, and if I wanna let the bolt go home, I can do it like an AK or simply release the bolt. This, just like its predecessor, is convertible so you can run the charging handle on either side of the gun. Those are the primary differences between the guns. Now, the guns coming in as pistols, at least the initial run, have the military three-pronged flash hider on them, where the original Bryn 805s did not. They had more of a muzzle brake. Uh, I have an actual Bryn 805 barrel on that one. But the gas system is adjustable. You have three positions. You can shut the gas completely off. You have adverse conditions and regular conditions. So there isn't truly a suppressor setting. If you wanna run a suppressor on these guns, you probably ought to run something that's low back pressure like an OSS because you don't really wanna overgas the gun. So as I had mentioned, this one is the eight inch barrel. There's an 11 inch version out there. Of course, it's a couple inches longer and then you have the 14 inch barreled guns. Now, Jason set this gun up with the Magpul heat shielding on it as well. But um, again, all the same features here with the bolt hold, bolt release, being in the trigger guard, non-reciprocating reversible charging handle, all the fire controls are the same, and this is the 7.62 by 39 pistol. On here, we have the tail hook brace system, which plops right onto the tail cap. The tail cap on these pistols is pre-threaded for an AR-15 style buffer tube, so you just screw that on. We used the tail hook on this particular gun, and on my 8-inch pistol, I have the SB Tactical 
which is also adjustable for length of pull, just slightly different, has a more pliable foot here on the brace, and then this one's hard molded plastic, which swings out. So if you want to deploy the brace on this pistol, you swing it out and it operates like that. All right, so let's go ahead and close the brace up and let's do a little bit of shooting. I'm gonna start off with Jason's pistol here. Let's do the 762 by 39. This is the proprietary magazine. We have some Fiocchi ammunition. The ammunition is from our friends over at LAX Ammo. There is a discount code down below. They sell their own branded ammunition, but primarily I pick up other brands from them. They donate the ammunition to the channel. The code, we do not get any financial kickbacks from the use of that code, so we don't get paid for ammo being sold. However, they do supply ammunition to the channel. There is, again, that code down below, and a good, I believe it's good for 3% store right wide. I used to say 6%, it's actually 3%. The prices are pretty low already, they don't have much margin. All right, let's go ahead and load up the Fiocchi. Now, what's kind of nice is it's not a rock and lock. It has an AR-15 style mag latch on it. So you just straight push into the gun, pull the charging handle to the rear, let it go. Don't ride that bolt at all. It'll fully chamber. Let's go ahead and grab my little rest here. And we're just gonna pop a man size target down there. It's a challenge target. And we're gonna shoot at the Ipsic. And we'll just pop away at the Mr. Ipsic target here really quick. Uh-oh, I think I didn't get the mag all the way seated. All right, I can tell the rifle's empty because the bolt locks open, so that's a nice feature. These are not compatible with AK magazines. So it does have a last round bolt hole for the proprietary magazines. Now this little thing is a sweet shooting little rifle. For 762 by 39, I call it a rifle, it's a pistol. <laughs> it's a sweet shooting little pistol with a brace on it. And it is 762 by 39 and has the recoil really just slightly more than a standard 5.56. So let's grab the 5.56 pistol with the brace on it. I'll use my eight inch gun. Now this one has a aim point, and this is a Comp M5. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. Open up my protectors. All right, and let's grab a magazine. This is some more of the Fiocchi. This is some of their 55 grain stuff, and this is a standard magazine. This actually ships with the pistols. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and insert it. Again, it's just a straight push, charge the pistol. Again, I'm not getting those mags all the way seated. There we go. And let's go ahead and pop that Ipsic target again. All right, that is a short little thumper. I love this pistol. What a great, great firearm. All right, guys, let's um, go ahead and let these guns cool off, and then let's field strip them and show you how these Brins look on the inside, the new Bryn 2s. This is a Bryn 805 bayonet, and it's scabbard. Here's the blade of the bayonet. You can tell it's a Tonto style. It's sharpened here on the top and on the bottom, and it's extremely sharp. You'll notice it has a very thick spine on the blade. And it's a very robust, well-made knife. You'll notice also it has a hole here in the blade, which is a throwback to the old AK-47 days where it's, you have a wire cutter built into it. Then on the scabbard, you have a integrated sharpening stone as well. Now this is the 805 bayonet, but they really haven't changed anything. The 805 bayonet slips right on to this 14 inch barrel and then the lock mechanism slides down. I don't know why it's giving me a fit right now. It's usually fairly easy to lock into place. All right, there we go. All right, now it's locked into place, and there's your bayonet for the 805. 
Now, on the 14-inch guns, you're going to find the bayonet lugs. Obviously, the, the Bren 805 has a shorter barrel than the current 14-inch model, which has this bayonet lug further out. On the 805, you had the bayonet lug on the gas block. Here, you had the bayonet further, lug further forward because the barrel's slightly longer, but it's still the same bayonet. So, there you go. Don't ask me where to get these because they are not being imported currently, and I would imagine people are bringing these in when they visit the Czech Republic. I don't know. <laughs> but I thought I'd show you guys the original bayonet that belongs with the guns uh, since I did manage to acquire one. Let's take the Bren 2 apart and see what it looks like on the inside. First, we're going to go ahead and lock the bolt to the rear. Again, you can push up right here inside your trigger group here. Inside the trigger guard, pull it to the rear, push up. That locks the bolt to the rear. Now we can physically inspect the chamber. The magazine is out, chamber is clear, and I'm going to let that bolt go home by pushing down on that same latch. Now, there are two pins that hold the, the gun together. I'm going to pop both pins out. Both pins are captive. doesn't matter which order you loosen them in. All right, so I'm going to pop both pins out. They'll remain captive in the, the respective parts. My fingers are cold. It's only 50 degrees today. All right, and now take the lower assembly off by pulling down on the front slightly and popping it out. As you can tell, it's a polymer lower, and then you have steel components for the trigger group inside the fire control. Set that aside. Now, to take the end cap off, push forward on this little lever and pull down, and it'll pop off. And that's where you can put either your stock, if you SBR it, or your brace adapter, which we have here. Set that end cap to the side. Now, there is a captive recoil spring and buffer here. You'll want to make sure that when you put this back together, you'll notice that the buffer has a horseshoe shape here by my index finger, and you'll notice that there's a horseshoe shape here on top where the screw goes that holds your sling adapter. Make sure you put it back together this way and don't put this, if you take the buffer off the recoil spring, don't put it up here because you can, which will cause the gun to damage this recoil buffer and you'll have to replace it. I know this because a Patreon did that. They took this piece off, put it back together incorrectly, put the gun back together, fired it, and it munched that piece. All right, so there's your captive recoil spring and guide rod. It's not grunt proof. Now, if you go to try to remove your bolt from the uh, bolt and carrier from the receiver here, you, you, instinctively you're going to want to pull this to the rear, pull this out, and then try to take this out, but it won't come apart. Why will it not come apart? That's because the Ford Assist assembly is preventing you from taking it apart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the charging handle back in here. And you see that little hook, that's part of the Ford Assist assembly. I'm going to go ahead and put it back in. And I'm going to put the bolt in its furthermost locked position. This will actually lock in the forward position. And now with my finger, I can pull the bolt back into the rear. It's, it's disconnected from its Ford Assist assembly now. Okay, there's your bolt and carrier. Now I can unlatch this. You'll notice how it hinges. You'll see it kind of pivot. It'll pivot and that unlocks it, that shoots it to the rear inside, you're just gonna see a little polymer plate here next to my index finger. That's part of the Ford Assist assembly. All right, I'm gonna take this charging handle out of the receiver and then just leave that little plate in there. It won't come out because it's being held on here by this end cap that has a sling adapter. If you want this piece out, you have to unscrew this. There's no reason to take it out. That's your Ford Assist adapter. So that's pretty much all you need to do to field strip the gun. Now you can go further, you can take the firing pin out and that will allow you to, see if I can use the tip of a bullet here. There we go. You can, I'm gonna hold on to the firing pin here, push this pin across, take this pin out, it is not captive, and then release the firing pin by pulling or pushing down on that little spring-loaded tab right there. Your firing pin comes out and it's recoils, uh, it's recoil spring and it's spring. And then you can take the cam pin out and then you can take your bolt out. Okay, so that's fully field stripped. Now, this is like an AR-15 with its really small cotter pin. You want to be careful doing this in the field. It's not really necessary. Just wipe it down, lubricate it, put it back together. And I would do this in a, a rear area or a safe area um, because you don't want to lose those small parts. There's no reason to do that, just like the M16. All right, to put it back together, you're just going to reverse the process.
grab my cam pin here, put it in, take my firing pin and spring, insert that. Now I will keep you from putting it together incorrectly. Push your spring in, put your cross pin back in. Maybe I'm doing it backwards. There we go. Okay, so now the pin's back in, the assembly's back together and functioning. Okay, now I'm gonna put my charging handle back into the polymer. You're gonna have to kind of push up on it a little bit and wiggle it around. And then I'm gonna push this all the way forward like that. Now I can drop my bolt and carrier into the receiver. Make sure that bolt's forward. Just like that. And now the bolt has stopped moving forward. That's because I'm gonna have to push down that little polymer plate. It naturally wants to lift up and it'll ride past it. And now everything should be working as it should. Take your recoil spring, put it in, turn the horseshoe shape down and it will just sit in there. It's not gonna preload, so you don't have to worry about things flying off under pressure. Take your end cap, put it in the slot, just slide it down, push forward on that spring just a little bit, grab that lever, and it'll just plop right into place. Now you can take your lower assembly, rock it into place. It has a tab back here, rock the upper up, push your pins across, and now, the gun is ready to shoot. So it's very simple and straightforward to take apart. It's somewhat similar to an AR-15, and now you can see how that forward assist mechanism works on the gun. The eight inch gun that you see here, I've been shooting quite a bit and have come to really enjoy. This gun has replaced my BCM AR-15 in the Jeep. It's a little bit smaller, handier, fits into the rack that I use it in very easily, and I've just kind of fallen in love with the guns. It's everything that the 805 and SCAR wasn't. And the SCAR was pretty much um, the standard that everybody was trying to beat. The SCAR has an extruded aluminum receiver. This one is machined from Billet, which we got to see while we were in the Czech Republic. Uh, the SCAR has a reciprocating charging handle. This one does not, but still has the Ford Assist capabilities if you so choose. And it has the improved fire controls. And the SCAR, trying to get a shorter barrel for it's almost impossible. So you have to send it out, have somebody cut it down. You better send it to somebody you trust because that's an ir you, you simply can't replace that barrel. And if you screw the barrel up, yeah. So most people are stuck with them as 16 inch rifles. These are available as pistols, which you can SBR or use as a brace as you see here. And they've, they're just better built, more rugged feeling and shoot extremely well. So the SCAR 16S never really impressed me much as a rifle. The SCAR-17 does, it's kind of peerless in its class, but the SCAR-16 really doesn't bring much to the table, and I think a lot of folks agree with that. Now what I'm gonna do now is shoot the gun, I'm gonna hold it like this with my hand on the charging handle, so you will see, I'll, with my thumb wrapped over, you'll know that the charging handle's right there in the web of my hand, and you'll see the charging handle is not reciprocating. I'm gonna go ahead and load the gun up, I have 25 rounds of Fiocchi, charge the weapon, grab it, you can see my thumbs right there, okay? And now I'm gonna take my little aim point, I'm gonna pound away at that beater target at 50 yards away that's a challenge target. Such a great trigger on the gun. Now I had my hand there the entire time. Obviously the gun's working, you can see the bolts to the rear here, charging handle is forward. Really, really nice. Push the button, magazine cleanly drops out. I have a 20 round Lancer. I can push it in. I can release the magazine like an AR-15 with my thumb. Or, and some people in the United States aren't gonna like this because we're safety sallies for the most part, but I can stick my finger inside the trigger guard and release the bolt as well. Some people won't like putting your finger in the trigger guard until you're ready to shoot, and I understand that, right? So anyway, you have that option with the, uh, the Bryn 2. And again, magazine drops out. Such an incredibly smooth shooting gun. I just absolutely love this thing.
This is the Sun 6 2x39 pistol that Jason has. We have some Wolf steel cased ammunition loaded up. We are previously using some Fiocchi brass cased ammo. Now, what's interesting about the 7.62x39 variant is that the French GIGN counterterrorism unit has adopted 7.62x39 rifles just like this one, except with the 9 inch barrel. And then the Pakistani military has adopted the rifle with the 14 inch barrel like you see with the pistol here. So the 7.62 x 39 guns have met with acceptance within the military communities and special forces communities uh, around the world. And now the 5.56 version is going into production for the Czech military. Now you've seen this gun as, as being talked about as the 806, which is not the proper nomenclature of the firearm. There isn't a Bryn 806, it's just a Bryn 2. The 805 and the Bryn 2, there never was an 806. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and load up the steel case stuff. The bolt's locked to the rear. I can drop the bolt like that with the um, release that's in the trigger guard, just like on the 5.56 version. And now I'm gonna pop off 20 rounds at that little challenge target. It's about 100 yards away. Man, that thing hits with some authority. Now, what's really interesting about the 80, <laughs> not the 806, I started talking about the 806 and I didn't mean to, the Bryn 2 and even the 805 is that much like the SCAR, the Bolton Carrier has a lot of extra travel to it, so it feels very gentle in the recoil department. You don't get that abrupt stop and then forward movement. It feels like you can almost feel the Bolton Carrier moving to the rear and then gently going forward. So it has a very smooth action to it that makes it very, very shootable. The 762 by 39 is actually pretty darn cool. At some point, I'm gonna have to pick one up, but I may have to wait until the new modular version comes into the country. I hope you guys enjoyed coming out and checking out the Bren 2 pistols that were imported for a short time, which will be replaced by the Bren 2, meant to be more for the American market. They'll have more modular features, and by that I mean you'll have adjustable length handguards and things like that that the current military configuration Bryn 2 does not have. So these, again, were silently dropped on the U.S. market. These are currently out there in circulation. You can find them on places like Gun Broker. Most of the dealers have already sold out of them. I don't know how many units were actually imported in that first batch, but all I know is the backstory that they made it in. They weren't the configuration that CZ USA wanted, and they just kind of silently released them to the U.S. civilian market. All right, guys, so one thing I wanted to point out that I didn't point out before is that the Bren 2 does have a storage compartment for a cleaning kit or something like that here in the pistol grip. All right, close that little guy up. I really enjoyed this little 8-inch gun a lot. We're going to fire off the last few rounds here, guys. If you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, a great way to do that is to become a Patreon supporter. We do not take any money from anybody in the industry. CZ doesn't pay me to talk about their firearms. Nothing like that. We are 100% viewer supported, and you can become a supporter of the Military Arms Channel by following the Patreon link down below. Also, another great way to support us is to pick up a t-shirt from our Forge from Freedom store. I was going to go ahead and unzip my jacket here. I don't know if you can see it. There's a little mic cable, but I have my P365 t-shirt on. But if you swing by the Forge from Freedom shop, there is a link down below. Go to the Mac collection and pick up a t-shirt and that directly supports us again here at the Military Arms Channel. Then if you're in the market for something like a Bryn 2 and they become available, or if you want to pick up an Aimpoint Comp M5 or one of these Kinetic Dev Group quick detach mounts, something like that, swing by our shop at coppercustom.com and that's another great way, again, to support us here at the Military Arms Channel. All right, guys, I'm going to blast off these final few rounds, head back, clean up the guns, and put this 8-inch pistol back in the Jeep. Thanks for all the support, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Jeez, that thing shoots good. Oh, I love this little check, darling, man. <laughs> All right, guys, here it is, the bump fire challenge. And it's the Jason bump fire challenge. I have never bump fired my Bryn 2 before. This is my very first attempt. And let's see how this goes. <laughs> oh, I screwed it up.
off to a rough start, but I figured it out. <laughs> that thing bump fires really, really good, man. <laughs> I love this gun, guys. I really, really do. That's fun.